At a bend in the road, they suddenly appear. A string of medieval citadels nestled high over the Drôme Valley. In the 17th century, the breeding of silkworms turned around the fortunes of the village of Miermond. 300 years later, though, its streets were completely abandoned. The whole community came back to life thanks to a surprising coincidence. The village was reborn thanks to André Lort, a well-known Cubist painter who was working at the beginning of the last century. He decided to head south to look for a place to set up a summer school, a summer academy as it was known. And legend has it that he broke down here, and while he was waiting for his car to be repaired, he fell in love with this ruined village with all its Cubist shapes. Miermond is not just a village of artists, it's also the village of cats. There are lots of them everywhere. Let's meet the last artist who moved to Miramond. His work is impressive. The village is awash with artists who are able to let their imaginations run wild. These are all abandoned woods that have been thrown out, burnt or chopped. Fifteen kilometers further on is La Lopie, a village protected by stone ramparts. In 1944, the Germans set up an artillery battery here to stave off the Americans' advance in the valley. The village was completely annihilated by the bombing, but it was then rescued by a group of guardian angels. All of these houses have modern-day comforts. But as you can see, there are no electricity cables and there are no shutters in the windows. In 1963, La Lopie was still a ghost town. Here you can see what state the houses were in when we arrived. Part of the castle had no roof. People thought we were crazy, and we were, because rebuilding an entire village is no ordinary task. It's more than just restoring a home. You have to find ways to restore the community's soul as well. The Armand family spent over 30 years rebuilding the village, stone by stone. This is an old door frame that we found among the ruins and that we rebuilt here. It's a painstaking task that subsequent generations have worked hard to complete. Will you fix it? You're going to do some building work? My sisters and I see it as a big responsibility. This is the work of our parents, our grandparents, and one day it will be ours. A little higher up in the valley is Chambrion. The locals here are also keen to look after their village. First of all, we'll go to the garden, and then you can go onto the pond. Every week, they prune, water and plant. Today, they're putting in an aromatic flowering perennial, the agastache. You have to put it in this way, look. Yes, OK. And nice and upright. In this floral and fragrance village, all the residents are green-fingered. There's a sweet osmanthus. And over there, there's a eucalyptus. Everything's logged in books, but I forget where everything is exactly planted. Over there, we have Porovskis. Chambriand is one of 10 so-called botanical villages in the Drôme, a real kingdom of flowers. It's not just any old thing. You can't just say we're a botanical village. You need lots of fragrant plants. Everything has to be tidy. There can be no weeds. It has to be well maintained. The village is scrutinized each year by a team of inspectors who hand out the much coveted award. There are nine others, so there's no real rivalry. But we still want to do as well as the others. But perhaps the most beautiful garden in this region is this one, perched high up at over 1,500 metres. The forest of Sioux attracts geologists from all over the world. 
We have before us a syncline, which is an exceptional geological formation. It's the folding of the rock from the Pyrenean chain. And here we have a full syncline, meaning that the massif is surrounded on all sides. The Drôme owes much of its magic to these dramatic landscapes and to its lofty villages nestled in its peaks. Luckily for this region, its residents are out in force to preserve these picturesque treasures.